What's up guys, my name is Ace, and Michael Condry released a work in progress menu system for COD World War II, and there's more information in this than you might have initially thought. So today we're going to be looking at this and looking at all of the potential implications this has on the game and the gameplay itself. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so this is exciting because we haven't seen any sort of multiplayer info for quite some time. It's kind of been a dry period for information aside from zombies. And it's good to see something like this. But as you can see, this is the work in progress menu and keywords there, work in progress. I've been seeing a bunch of people on Reddit already saying like, oh, this looks terrible. This really sucks. I hate how this looks. This is a work in progress. I'm sure there will be a lot of improvements to this over time. But as you can see here, we've got six tabs so far in this menu. We've got public match, ranked match, custom match, daily mode, last played, and Nazi zombies. And out of all those tabs, we only get the description for the public match, which just says, join an unranked public battle, choose to fight in a variety of modes and maps. Now, some people are interpreting this as there is no skill-based matchmaking in public match because it says unranked. But to me, all it really confirms is that it's separate from the ranked match, which we'll talk about in a second here. I still feel there will be some weak skill-based matchmaking in this game, like we've seen in a lot of the previous Call of Duties, excluding Advanced Warfare. So something like Black Ops 3 or Infinite Warfare, they do have a very weak skill-based matchmaking algorithm in place. And I do feel we'll have that in COD World War II as well. As for ranked match though, just based on where these menus are, it's nice to see that we apparently don't have a ranked playlist just within the public match menus. This is something that Infinite Warfare definitely failed with, they just had that ranked playlist alongside the public matches, and therefore all your stats carried over, it also didn't really properly follow professional rule sets, and I believe you had to actually unlock things in public matches in order to use them in your classes for the CWL playlist. It really didn't make much sense at all. It looks like this year, again, we are going to have a separate public match from the ranked match, and this has a lot of implications. First off, it seems that you won't have to unlock all of your gear in public matches in order to make your perfect class in the ranked match. We will likely have everything available to us and unlocked in the ranked match that the pros have available to them in their rule set. And it doesn't matter what level you are, everybody has access to that. I'm really hoping that's the case at least, but it seems like that's going to be the case with it being separated from public matches. And also, it seems likely that our stats are going to be separate for ranked match and public match. And I think this is a great thing. Even though I'm not somebody that plays specifically for stats like kill-death ratio or score per minute or win-loss ratio or anything like that, I do like to sometimes track that progress in my public matches, and I would like to track that progress in ranked match. If you combine those stats together, there's no real way that you can track them because you're playing basically two different games. So I'm really hoping this means that we are going to have separate stats as well as separate class system with everything unlocked and available to us in the ranked matches, at least everything that isn't banned under the competitive rule set. And also, I'm really hoping for proper support for this ranked match. Now moving on to some of the other tabs, custom match, that's not surprising at all. I don't know if there's really too much to say there. I hope there's lots of customization and options with our custom matches. Infinite Warfare, I feel, did an excellent job with their custom matches. There was tons of options you could change up and tweak, so many little things. And I really hope they follow suit with this year in their custom matches. The next one is Daily Mode. This one I want to talk about a little bit. It looks like this is going to be a featured sort of mode, kind of like we've seen with Modern Warfare Mastered's weekend playlists, as well as Infinite Warfare's featured mode, which we get every single week. I think these featured type modes are a great idea because these modes are usually things where if they were in regular rotation, they were just a normal mode, they probably wouldn't get the best player base. There might even be like nobody at all playing them. But when you put them in as a limited time featured mode, they get a big rush of players that want to play that because they realize it's limited time. This also is something that encourages people to keep coming back for more, especially when it just happens to be that period of time where their favorite featured mode is active. One issue that I could see arise from having a daily mode is I feel like it's a little bit too fast of a turnaround for changing up the modes constantly. What if your favorite featured mode just happens to be on a day where you can't get on and play? You're just busy, there's no way around it, you just can't make it on to play, but you really, really want to play that mode. With a one-day turnaround, too bad. You miss your day, you'll have to wait until next time and hope you're not busy that day as well. 
I really feel a two to three day turnaround would be a much better way to handle this. So it's not a daily mode, but just, just a featured mode that changes up every two to three days. That way, if you are really busy on the one day, at least you can try to make time for it the next day or something along those lines. And also for a lot of people, I feel like it's not enough time to build up some hype. A lot of times I don't realize what the featured mode is until people start talking about it, which is at the end of that day. And if they were switching over already, I probably wouldn't have time to even log on and play it after realizing what it was. And the same thing goes for a lot of people that aren't active on Twitter or Reddit, or they don't log in every day to see what the featured mode is. They might not get the time that they want to play that mode. That's just my opinion though, maybe a daily mode would work quite well, and also keep in mind this is a work in progress, maybe they'll realize the same thing and switch that up to a 2-3 to three day turnaround. We don't know, but I am overall excited that we are going to be seeing those featured limited time modes. Looking at the next tab on this menu, we have the last played tab. This one seems pretty self-explanatory to me, it'll just be the last game mode that you played, just for quicker navigation so you can get to that mode as fast as possible, which is great for those people that typically just stick to one game mode, which is actually a lot of people, and it might save you the couple seconds instead of going into the public match and then scrolling down and finding your mode, you can just go ahead and go straight to the mode that you want to hop into. I'm not too sure how necessary this feature is, like it seems like it would only save you a couple seconds, but hey, I wouldn't say it's gonna hurt anything. So finally, the last tab that we can see here is for Nazi Zombies, which is interesting. It looks like we don't have to back out to a main menu where it's like campaign, multiplayer, and zombies. It seems like campaign is going to be its own separate thing, and then we're going to have access to our public match, rank match, and zombies all within the same area. This seems relatively minor to me. Maybe this will encourage a little bit more crossplay between zombies and multiplayer. So instead of people that just go into the zombies menu and they just play zombies, or people that go into the multiplayer menu and just play multiplayer, maybe this will encourage them to cross over to the other mode a little bit more. But honestly, I don't know how much of an impact that's going to have on player base or anything. If anything, it seems like it's just excellent for ease of access to whichever mode you want to play. Now, even though that's all the information we really have from those tabs, there's a little bit more we can gain from this image. First off, everything seems to be offset to the left-hand side, and it seems like we've got room for at least two more tabs on the right-hand side of the image here. It's either that, or like I was saying, this is just a work in progress, and things just happen to be justified left instead of center, or something along those lines. But it seems like there might be some room for something else to go there. Maybe it's going to be something like our barracks or our leaderboards. Maybe that'll be in this menu. Maybe that'll be displayed elsewhere. We don't really know at this point. Another thing we can gain from this image is at the bottom, you can see if you press the options button, it will take you into the headquarters. And to me, this seems to lead to what I'm thinking about headquarters, which is it's going to be like our interactive menu system. So all of the other things that you could access within the menus, like opening your supply drops or creating your class or division, I guess in this case, it seems like you might have to do that in the headquarters mode, meaning you'll have to enter the headquarters, you'll have to run your third person character over to an area, and that particular area will act as that menu system. So if you want to open a supply drop, you got to run over to the guy that handles the supply drops. If you want to create your division, maybe you have to run over to an armor or something along those lines and change up your division. Also, if you want to go over to the firing range, you got to run over to the range master so you can enter the firing range. I've said this before and I'll say it again in this video, this makes me a little bit nervous about the headquarters mode. I feel like if this is the case, it's going to be a little bit of a gimmick and it's probably going to get on a lot of our nerves as time goes on. It seems really cool at first, but sometimes I just want to hop on and I want to get into my games as fast as possible. I don't want to be running around to access something that used to be a quick down arrow and X to get to. Hopefully, if this is the case, they will have an option to bring up a quick menu so you don't have to be running around headquarters to get your stuff done and you can get it done just as fast as you could in the past. But this does worry me a little bit about headquarters that it's just going to be that gimmick that is kind of a waste of time in between games when you just want to get everything sorted and get into the game as fast as possible. And with that, we're going to wrap up today's video, and I'd love to know what you guys think about this menu so far. Are there any other thoughts you have on this menu system? Maybe something I didn't quite pick up on? What do you guys think of the daily mode instead of like a weekly featured mode, or a mode that changes up every two to three days? 
And what are your thoughts on the potential of the headquarters system simply being that interactive menu where you have to run from point A to point B in order to access something that used to be a simple menu that you would get to? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.